Oddworld Soulstorm contains more types of slicks than perhaps any other Oddworld game, so I thought it'd be interesting to take a closer look at each version that appears. I'm only looking at individual slick units in terms of the gameplay, so I won't include ones such as the Chauffeur Slick or the Slick Mama Operator, which you could argue are also types of slicks present. The first type is your normal popper class, the most similar to the standard slig seen in the previous Oddworld games. This one appears exactly as you expect a slig to be looking. It's literally just a standard slig. The only difference is its weaponry. While this one's gun fires in the manner of a machine gun, as standard slig's weapons typically do, the one in Soulstorm actually looks like a machine gun. No longer is it apparently using the shotgun looking rapid machine gun firing weapon, often referred to oddly as the blunderbuss, that slags are famous for, and instead it's using this little stubby lightweight tinny feeling weapon that I've seen referred to as the T1 and or T2 weapons, though I don't know if that's actually what they're called. These are pretty pathetic weapons, probably the most useless guns used by the Sligs, only being able to fire for a few seconds before visibly overheating and having to cool down, which is a really nice touch. I like that you can actually see it glow in orange, and honestly it must be somewhat a well made gun because it manages to handle some serious overheating. This gun's damage output from my experience is relatively low, if you possess one of these slicks and use the weapon to shoot another slick, you have to make sure you're entirely accurate in your aiming with this gun that sprays everywhere, otherwise it frequently won't land enough hits to kill the opposing slick before stalling and forcing you to wait for it to cool down, by which time you will probably be shot and killed yourself. There are also flying slick variants that possess these or similar machine guns, but of course which have much more manoeuvrability thanks to their helipacks, making them far more deadly with a greater range of aim. Although the standard slick no longer possesses the infamous blunderbuss, a gun resembling it is utilised by the next type of slick on our list, the shotgunner. It seems Oddworld inhabitants decide to, as some might say, rectify the inconsistency that the Slig's guns resembled shotguns and yet fired as though they were machine guns, as these new shotgunners, as the name suggests, possess guns that look like shotguns, or rather Oddworld's blunderbusses, and actually fire like shotguns. Personally though, I'm not a fan of this change because it's a completely different planet in a fictional universe. It doesn't have to make sense or have logic that we'd understand. I could be wrong of course, it's just an arguably interesting observation because I don't get why people apply Earth logic to Oddworld. To the point even the Oddworld wiki refers to this change in Soulstorm as Oddworld inhabitants having fixed it, as though it was an error that they'd made in the previous games, like they designed this weapon and was like, wait, how does this guy on fire again, ah uh, let's just do it as a machine gun. The amount of detail Oddworld inhabitants puts into their work is insane. Personally I doubt it was a mistake that the blunderbuss is designed as it is and fires like it does. I would assume it was intended and a deliberate design choice for whatever reason. If I had to guess from a gameplay design perspective why they did this. I'd say they chose the look of it because shotguns seem more deadly one shot kill type of weapons, so a player sees it and instantly subconsciously is being told, okay if a slig shoots me I'm dead straight away, as is the case in the original Abe games, and is arguably a relatively rare gameplay mechanic, typically in games you frequently engage in and survive gunfights, with for example machine guns, so they don't give off that same impression necessarily. However, machine guns do give the impression that they can get you from any distance, whereas shotguns are like, yeah they're deadly, but only at close range. So I suspect that is why they chose to make the blunderbuss fire rapidly, like a machine gun, to indicate that despite its appearance, it isn't a close range weapon and can get you from any distance on the screen. That's just my personal speculation about why that gun is how it is, and actually I guess you could argue that based on that analysis that would mean its design is outdated now because the gameplay has changed and a standard slick machine gun is no longer a one shot kill for Soulstorm. So maybe that's why they changed it among the sweeping redesigns for the universe that they've done. But personally, I think it's a shame that Oddworld inhabitants have taken a bit of the quirk of the Slig's famous weaponry out of this game and provided what you'd expect from a more standard arsenal. That's just a few of my personal thoughts on the matter anyway. So a shotgunner is one of the most deadly Slig's in the game. Although they use normal shotguns, their gun is still surprisingly effective at far distances and can kill in one burst. 
The disadvantage for this slig is that it has a relatively low fire rate, you could argue. But apart from that, it's a very effective weapon, and if you get hit by one, it doesn't matter that he'll need to reload, because you'll be dead. Design-wise, this slig looks exactly the same as a standard slig, except these ones have red light-tipped aerials coming from their backpacks, or pants I guess. I suppose this was done to clearly differentiate it from the popper slicks and give you some heads up in case you didn't notice from the guns they were carrying that these ones fire shotguns. And much like the popper slicks, shotgunners also come in flying slick form, which are very effective at taking out fellow flying slicks. The next enemy on the list is the Shock Rocker Slick, first being unveiled rather secretly before Soulstorm came out in a screenshot Odd One Inhabitants put on their website, which thank you very much to DJ Lego Star for letting me know about this. The Shock Rocker Slick is the only purely melee, melee however it's pronounced, Slick in the game, wielding what has come to be presumed to be a Shock Rocker. That name coming from the weapon intended to be used by the interns in Oddworld Munch's Odyssey, but never made it in the final game. Whether these weapons utilised by the Sligs in Soulstorm actually are shock rockers though, who knows. Although they are similarly electrified batons, they are of a completely different design, and plus there's no mention of shock rocker in the files of Soulstorm, at least from what I found, where it's instead seemingly referred to as simply a baton, with the type of slig itself just called a melee slig. These slicks are apparently designed essentially as riot police, and are seen walking slowly towards any threat they see, and walking them with their clubs when within range. Due to only carrying their baton, they completely lack any ranged attack, and as a result are easily the most useless slicks in the game. They seem to do a Ray Charles if you go within their view cone, but in a position where they're unable to get to you. What they lack in ability to attack, they make up for in defence, being immune to Abe's possessive abilities due to wearing rather brilliantly tinfoil hats with mini chance suppressors on them that prevent possession orbs from taking over these slicks. I absolutely love this because tinfoil hats, much like this one, are a stereotype of conspiracy theorists. Based on the idea that people wear hats made of, as I think they say in America, aluminum foil, in order to prevent people reading their minds or using mind control on them. As a result, in my opinion, it's kind of a stroke of genius that Oddworld Inhabitants gave Sligs tinfoil hats that actually work and actually do prevent Abe from controlling their minds. What's brilliant about it is that the Mogog cartel in Soulstorm doesn't believe in Abe or that he's going about possessing people and doing all the things he's doing and just disregards all this news as being conspiracy theories. And as a result, the only Sligs that are smart to prepare against him in this manner are of course conspiracy conspiracy theorists that believe the stories, and I take it as somewhat of a commentary perhaps on how too often ignorant and powerful entities will disregard genuine ideas as being conspiracy theories and call anyone saying ideas that they disagree with lunatic conspiracy theorists simply because they dislike what is being said, just as the Magog cartel disregard this Abe guy and his powers as untrue, yet clearly some Sligs are more open-minded. I also wonder if the timing of their appearance is relevant to the story as well, as I think they're initially seen in the Slig barracks level, and by this time Abe has been causing all sorts of trouble, so it makes sense that these stories have clearly started to spread by this point. Stories of mind control and involuntary combustion, even though they're being ruled out as nothing but conspiracy theories, there are clearly some Sligs who have heard what's been going on, who are scared by it and want to protect themselves. And the thing I love about this is that it also explains a question that has sort of been asked since Abe's Odyssey and Exodus, which is, why don't characters like Sligs and Gluckons just have personal possession orbs always with them so they're never at risk? Well here we have an answer because they don't believe that they're at risk, and the ones who do are considered loony tinfoil hat-wearing conspiracy theorists to believe in such nonsense. The Gluckons are so confident in their power, which creates their ignorance, and as a result, they don't feel like they need to. Now to go into more detail with the design of the headgear, it seems that it's actually a makeshift tinfoil hat, made out of what I think is called a sieve bowl. You can see the holes in the handles and the legs for it, 
as though upside down it would be used for cooking, or whatever it is sieve bowls are used for. But at the top is the antenna, which is made out of tin foil and is stuck on this bowl with tape by the looks of it. And on the tip of it is what appears to actually be some kind of light bulb type of chance presser. Interestingly, they aren't the only stigs to wear the tin foil hats, with other types also having them as well on rarer occasions. They're certainly one of the most unique and fascinating sleeks in my opinion. Up next is the minigunner, who surprisingly carries a minigun. The most rapid fire weapon in the game, these guns fire tons of massive thick bullet streams with pretty darn good accuracy and intense fire rate, with not even having to reload that frequently. Easily the most powerful machine gun seen in an Oddworld game, I'd argue. They're able to mow enemies down with great ease. These sleeks wear heavy protective gear, wearing a hard hat that protects their heads and a mask that seemingly conceals their tentacles for some reason. And they appear to store their great quantities of ammunition on two barrels on their backs. As if they weren't already deadly enough, there are also flying sleek variants able to traverse and fire wherever they please, that were first introduced in the opening cutscene released in 2019. The next slick is oh good the sniper, which is my favourite slick, I'm joking they're really annoying. Considering the slicks are known for their terrible eyesight, it's quite a surprise that there's apparently a sniper core within the slick army. And these units are in many ways some of the most deadly in Oddworld Soulstorm, having pinpoint accuracy while using a weapon that kills the player instantly in one shot, unless you're playing on easy. You damn coward. They use a laser sight to detect enemies, which I don't know about you, but personally I found it sometimes difficult to judge the depth correctly in this 2.9D game environment, which made it even more challenging. Not to mention they somehow have the ability to just jump the sight right on you all of a sudden sometimes, even if you weren't anywhere near it, and all this makes them some of the most challenging enemies in the game. As if they weren't already difficult enough to get past, as someone who spent a lot of time speedrunning the blimp level, let me tell you that the fact that their laser path is random every time you load up is quite infuriating. But even more so, it's been a while since I've played the yards level, but I'm pretty sure the randomness of the sniper's laser sights combined with the bombs during the lift section of that level causes it to be impossible to do on certain occasions, as in the speed of the lifts, plus the location of the bombs, plus the random location of the sniper sticks detection laser paths makes it so that sometimes you literally can't do that part without getting killed. I think, anyway, I could be wrong, but either way, they've apparently patched the game and made the yards easier, so I don't know if they've done anything with that, but yeah, it's just something I noticed, or at least thought about. The sniper rifles utilised by these sticks is black and bright purple, which is quite interesting, and the sticks themselves look exactly like normal sticks, except much like the shotgunner, they have an aerial sticking up from their pants, this time having a purple light on their tip instead of the red one. I don't think it's necessary to possess a sniper sleek throughout the entire game because they always operate at a far distance, but it is actually possible to possess them. The Oddworld Wiki states that the first instance of any being close enough to possess is in Necron Burial Grounds, which is really interesting because I don't remember being able to get that close to them there. However, it's actually possible to possess them even earlier than that, at the end of the Sorrow Valley level, and it's quite weird when you do take one over, because you can't seem to use them to fire at a distance as they normally do, and instead just fire their extremely powerful rifles from side to side like normal gameplay. The flamethrower sleek next on our list is designed primarily for close combat and can do a great amount of environmental damage as well as setting alight groups of enemies and Toby who begin running around panicking eventually quite quickly succumbing to their wounds and dying. Weirdly though, despite having literal flamethrowers, the range of their flames is significantly less than that produced by Abe's makeshift flamethrower made out of a fire extinguisher, which is able to project flames at a far greater distance. Flamethrower slicks wield your standard flamethrower with fuel tank on their back, as you'd expect, and rather ironically, they wear fireman helmets. These fire slicks also sport a very unique looking visor gas mask to protect them from the flames and smoke, or, well, these are somehow weirdly smokeless flames, but you get what I mean, usually fire produces smoke. And this gas mask is apparently very effective, as flamethrower slicks are invulnerable to fire. 
As with many of the previous types, there are flamethrower flying sleek variants with a lot more maneuverability, and likewise there are flying versions of the final variant on our list, the rocket launcher sleek. Which, I mean, you surely know what these do, they have rocket launchers that launch rockets. A nice touch that I like is that they carry rocket racks on their backs to store their ammunition. They do a great deal of damage as well. A direct hit from one of these guys is sure to obliterate whatever it hit, although their fire rate is among the slowest in the game. They wear a protective mask that covers their face and has eyes that reminded me of the armoured sligs from Oddworld Munch's Odyssey, which is an observation it turns out I'm not the only one to make, as it also says this on the Oddworld Wiki, which also interestingly states that their rocket launchers fire armour-piercing high-explosive warheads, which force even a FICO train to stop. Which makes me wonder why the Magog cartel didn't just get them to go after the train in the opening cutscene, instead of the minigunners. Back to their tentacle covering masks however, it's interesting to note that their right eye lens is way bigger than their left, suggesting it may be used or aid in the targeting of their missiles, like I can imagine a heads up display aiming thing appearing on his larger eye. It's an interesting thing to point out, that whereas the flying slig variants of the rocket launcher appear to act more like an actual rocket launcher, firing a missile in the direction you aim them, the grounded version, at least to me, feels more like a grenade launcher, having quite a small arc with which it fires the rockets, allowing it to land hits on targets upon higher platforms from the slig that's firing it. Grounded rocket launcher sligs are also perhaps, I would say, the rarest type of slig in the game. Off the top of my head, I can only recall seeing it twice, but there's probably way more than that. Perhaps very close to the flamethrower slig. I only remember seeing both of these sligs a couple of times throughout the entire game. Now it's worth pointing out that in addition to all the various weaponry utilised by the sligs on this list, firstly they can do the classic move of whacking people with their weapons, but also every slig as far as I'm aware, including the flying ones, also possess tasers and can change to this from their main weaponry, whatever it may be. Somehow the mini gunner just puts his massive gun away and pulls out this tiny taser. These tasers look exactly like the Popper Sligs machine guns, except it has a yellow barrel, which makes me wonder if like T1 and T2 represents, I don't know, T1 maybe is the machine gun variant, T2 the taser maybe, and has a very slow fire rate, which fires one bolt of electricity at a time. If it hits a target, it instantly stuns them, knocking them out though. Why is this in the game? I assume that this weapon is kind of a relic gameplay wise from when Oddworld inhabitants were making Oddworld Soulstorm with the idea that killing sligs would give you bad Kwama, which I believe isn't a system that made it into the final game. That's really the only purpose I can think of for the taser being in it because ultimately I don't really see why you would stun a slig temporarily with such a slow weapon as opposed to just shooting them dead. Even from a speedrunning point of view, I'd say it isn't really a quicker way to take care of sligs or anything because it takes a relatively long time for a slig to change over to this weapon from their main gun. And plus, if you fire your shot and miss, it takes a moment for you to be able to fire another one. It's just way quicker overall, in my opinion at least, to shoot sligs with whatever weapon you have initially. Firing even with the popper sligs tinny machine guns in the general direction of an opposing slig is frequently enough to kill them, even from a distance if your aim is good enough, making it a far quicker way to dispatch enemies, I'd say. But if for whatever reason you did want to not kill Sligs, the taser is at your disposal, I guess. It's also worth noting that Soulstorm is kind of weird in that sometimes things happen in the game that are so rare, I'm not sure if it's a glitch or something that's meant to happen because they're so difficult to reproduce again. For example, I was playing a couple of days ago on Fat Station, and as Abe, I was trying to get into a locker, but instead, for some reason, Abe slapped the Slig and knocked him out. He only went out for like a really short time, shorter than they're usually knocked out, but I managed to do this again at the same place immediately after dying. It was very reminiscent of when you slap sligs in the old games. However, I've since tried to replicate it in other situations and haven't been able to, so I don't know if that's like something Abe's meant to do, or if the game just bugged out or something, it was really weird. 
Anyway, the reason I'm saying this is because while I believe I've listed pretty much all of the Slig's offensive abilities here, there might be some rarer things they can do. Personally, on my first playthrough, I noticed that I think the Slig's used tasers on the Mudokans, which tied up the Mudokans when it hit them. However, I haven't seen this happen in a long time, and I was just trying to get them to do it again without success. Secondly, and perhaps most interestingly, I just saw a Shock Rocker Slig physically tie up a Mudokan on Fico Depot in exactly the same way Abe ties up slicks, except with green tape instead of blue, which I think was also what it looks like when they tied him up with the stun guns. Unfortunately, of course, I just happened to not be filming at that moment. I've never seen that happen before, and I tried many times to get them to do it again, and they didn't. So again, I don't know if they were meant to do that, but it was really weird. Another quick thing I'd like to add is that the mesh file for the standard flying slick in Soulstorm had a grenade separate from it. These grenades also appear on a belt around it as well. As far as I recall, I don't think any grenades are ever used by Sligs in Soulstorm, but this suggests to me that potentially at one point they were going to have actually utilised grenades in the game, much like they did in their first appearance in Abe's Exodus, so that's quite interesting. And that pretty much sums up every type of Slig and their abilities and arsenal as encountered in Oddworld Soulstorm. Hello, follow me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>